Welcome to Deja View. Your favorite view podcast? You just don't know it yet. Or maybe you do. Maybe it's your first episode or you're like in since the very first one of the trailer. Nevertheless, uh, I'm here with Michael Thiessen. Michael, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. And for those of you who don't know who I am, I am a full-time view educator. So I do content like this and courses and books and all that kind of stuff, teaching you all about view and Nuxt and all that fun stuff. And my co-host here is Alex. Yes. Hey, everybody. I am a web engineering consultant by day. I'm part of the Nuxt team. Uh, so shipping uh, parts of the amazing frameworks, documenting, doing some videos around that, also around Vue, Nuxt, and the JavaScript and TypeScript ecosystem. Um, and yeah, that's more or less everything about it. Of course, also doing that wonderful podcast here, Deja View, every week. And we are joined by a wonderful guest. She is a public speaker. She was a front lead before the startup called Zevi and is now a senior engineer at GitLab. Um, we've seen each other countless times. I've been to so many conferences and also will be very soon again. She's also a podcast co-host of one of the most famous German front-end podcasts called Working Draft. I have the pleasure to announce uh, Vanessa Böhner. How are you doing, Vanessa? Vanessa Otto in the meanwhile. Oh, shit. True. Sorry. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but it's, it's very nice to know that you still remember my old name. So now you also made the bridge um, for people who also might wander on the outside. Because I was always a bit like, you know, I, I built up this, not that I built up an internet <laughs> thingy, but I had some talks online before and where I was Vanessa Bühner. Um And in the meanwhile, I married 2021. And I think when this episode comes out, um, one day beforehand, um, we will have our wedding day, the third one now. Oh, um, congrats. Thank you. Um, but now it's like when I look for my own talks, it's like, was it Bühner or was it Otto? And I have some <laughs> um, pages where I have like a stack of, hey, you gave these talks at our conferences before and it started like blank again. I'm like, well, where my talks went? <laughs> yeah, then we have to start again. Uh, so yeah, first of all, of course, so sorry. Like the last three names, the three <laughs> years, uh, could have maybe uh, arranged to change it in my brain, but here we go. Uh, does it still happen often to people like, oh, hey, uh, like mm, use your last versa. name? Vice versa, actually. Rather, rather that people are telling me, hey, I actually forget forgot how your name was beforehand. Mm. And it was actually my brother who did it the first time, like after years where that he bought years after my marriage that he bought tickets for a concert and i made a joke like you used my new name right he was like oh do you still have an old passport or something because the tickets are bound to the name uh, but it's on my id like with the old name so yes my brother did it before you so okay you <laughs> <laughs> that then then it's all good <laughs> But thank you very much for this very nice introduction and especially both of you for this um, podcast and your work in the community. I'm very happy that I can now have the chance to really thank you both in the name of the whole community. I think this is very helpful and I, most of the times it's probably very silent for you because I'm just watching and listening and reading. Um, but I do it every time and it's very, very resourceful and very helpful. Well, thank Amazing. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th thank you so much. And also, th thanks to, to everybody also sharing that with us. Like we're getting probably like only from a, a small percentage, like comments of like, hey, it's amazing, super cool. So thanks to everybody consuming content. Of course, Vanessa, also for thanks for coming on uh, and mm -hmm. talk about uh, an amazing topic today, which is tip tap. Yeah. yeah. First, I'd like to, to ask you about uh, the working draft podcast. So I'm not German, so I had no idea about this podcast. Um, can you explain a little bit about that? I was on the, the website, by the way, I like the website, the way that it's styled. It's really, it's cool. really clever. Um, and, uh, what is it over 600 episodes now? That's, that's a lot of episodes there. I think we recorded 624 last Monday and 624 turned out to be 624 and 25 at the same time because we accidentally recorded three hours <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> <Wow. Yep. laughs> so it we split <laughs> happens so we split them into two which was also very um exciting for me the topic because it was about tailwind css 
version four and actually also still version three and still the whole discussion going on online and our experience with it. Apart from that, um, it is a web development podcast with a ping pong of topics. Um, we are five hosts, so I also don't have to be there like on a weekly basis, which is uh, very helpful. Um, but we are different hosts for different topics and it's a mix of TypeScript, web components, the whole frameworks, Vue, React, Quick, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and also then uh, one, we have one specialist really deep into CSS stuff who then talks about color things I don't even know how to pronounce and has more knowledge about specificity than anybody else. Um, so I do like the mix and the... Mm -hmm thing of the podcast is that we do like to talk so there is it is rather usual to have one and a half hour episodes and not these 20 minutes okay here are the facts but it's actually like discussing topics as you probably would do it also at work if you have the time at work like one and a half hours <laughs> <laughs> yep, so yeah so probably like you're not do it at work but like after work friends. like a, yeah <laughs> yeah but it's it's a really fun atmosphere. Uh, I've I've been I've been there for I think two episodes by now. Maybe soon three. Let's see. No, just just come a third time. Yeah, happy happy topic. happy to join. <laughs> Actually, it might this be even, what happens. Might be even three with the the six hundred. was a bit of, it was a bit of a special one with like the fishbowl. Everybody could join and discuss. It was a really cool format, and really really enjoyed it. Hope you'll do it again. Yes, we will. We are planning it. Perfect. So for the seven hundred, six hundred fifty. 666 <laughs> we will see <laughs> and so you you said your your five co-hosts like how does it work with um picking topics they like just decide okay let's see who's there who's interested or like free free for all um is there like a specific guide on like who has to be in when is it like <laughs> rotating um so i'm i've been not there by the way since 624 episodes i joined a couple of years ago um, and it's, but still the whole team, we know each other pretty well, and it's actually pretty simple. Um, we have an, we have a sheet with all of the episodes and sometimes I preset my name on a specific topic, for example, Tailwind, but then in the end, it's, we always record Monday 7 PM European time, uh, no, 8 PM actually. Um, and uh, we just check in on Slack before and like who wants to go today. And sometimes there are too many people who wants to join. And then we say, you know, it gets kind of confusing if there are four people on the podcast, especially if the voices are still kind of similar. And if you are a new joiner, then to the podcast episode, it might get a bit confusing and you might want to say your sentences, but you will let the other people talk on the other host talk. And then you say after like 20 minutes, I want to go back to the topic like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> Remember all in the beginning, there was something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes I also step back and have to listen to the episode afterwards. That totally makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I think panel discussions can be lots of fun. But as you said, like, especially for a podcast and then similar voices, maybe four people, maybe plus guests and so on can be, can be a bit chaotic for sure. Yes. So mostly, uh, mo most of the times we are free people. Well, it sounds like a nice size. Like we are here right now as well. <laughs> yeah, we've been finding that uh, the, the three person podcasts end up working well because while one person is talking, the other two can think about what to, to follow up with. And it's not as much of a burden on each individual person. So it's kind of nice in that way. Exactly. Like, I mean, one on one can also be super interesting, especially if we do like yeah. a bit of a technical topic, but then it's easier like to prepare a few things to like, also like show them the facts, some, some things we arranged beforehand. But with interviews, it's always like, there are so many ways a conversation can go. Uh, so many topics could go in deeper and yeah, then it's a bit nice to think a little longer while the other one is talking like right now, and then come up with a super cool question to follow up with. And then you end up with uh, three hour long episodes. Exactly. That, that can happen. <laughs> but then you can split them. That's the nice part. Everything I think yeah. uh, beyond two hours is uh, our two episodes and then it's fine. <laughs> but especially for, for the last two episodes, like finding a good point to split wasn't that easy, but it's, uh, it was good. And I hope everybody enjoyed the episode with Evan. Uh, looking forward still to read all the comments about that and feedback and what you all think and hope to have him on here with, uh, once again. But 
back uh, from from Avenue to Vue.js and TipTap. So you you brought Vanessa, you brought TipTap today with us. So maybe to everybody not knowing what TipTap is, could you briefly explain what is it about? Yes, TipTap is an open source rich text editor. It comes with a free part, and it also comes with some pro extensions. And I think the the thing that makes it special um, compared to the other rich text editors out there is that it's, um, the one part is it is very modern, so it fits really nicely in all of the framework ecosystems, but it's also headless. And I will definitely go into more mm -hmm. details what that means and where the advantages are. But I would also would like to quickly say why I was even interested in TipTap. As you mentioned uh, in the beginning, I was the head of frontend at Sevi, and we were using um, Ruby on Rails for the backend. And with that, we were using the tricks editor from Basecamp for the couple of places where we needed a rich text editor. And it was working out of the box, especially in the Rails environment. But there was a point where we said we would like to extend it with more functionality. We were also looking in ways and style it more in, in, in the system of our website and our product. But that was not actually the first must have and requirement that we were actually trying to check, but it was to extend a rich text editor with own functionality. Yeah. For example, we were using it for an onboarding tool and we had learning resources, which in the end, let's just call it technically, we had some things like iframes or YouTube players and many, many, many other things. So what we had to do were kind of to build in the Vue.js front end, to build different blocks and list with list items of here's a rich text editor with a view state and editable state. And then you can add a block here and then you have again a text block and block, 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 but not in the same editor. So if you think about it, if you as a user, you want to edit the text here, you really have to click in the right text block to then make text changes and you cannot drag and drop them around easily and you cannot make the changes quickly. And we couldn't find a way to do this with tricks. Um, so we were looking into other um, rich text editors and stumbled luckily over tip tip. Okay, sweet. And I mean, lots of applications need like a what you see is what you get or like a rich text editor. And you mentioned it is it is quite modern, as in uh, it it can integrate seamless. Is it like framework agnostic? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> that that means you can like you can use it with uh, with view application, of course. Um, but otherwise, you probably wouldn't have chosen it. But also with like I don't know, Solid, Angular, React, Svelte, jQuery, if you want to. Yeah, I, I was wondering for a second if I stumbled over a rich text editor, which was not framework agnostic. I'm not sure, but I'm also not that deep in the React world. And I could imagine that at least in the React world, there might be a React only rich text editor, but I'm not so sure. I wanted to mention also that I had a huge notion table with rich text editors I checked. Um, and I remember Summer Note Quill. And, and things like that, which mm -hmm. are nice in a way that if you need it for yourself on your website, if you need a, a quick uh, rich text editor, maybe for a blog or anything. And then especially I was checking out Editor.js, MCE, and CK Editor, which I just quickly want to mention there that they are, they are there as well. I think the Editor.js I quickly sorted out because I wasn't too sure about the roadmap that they were having because they were also kind of modern. But TipTip at this moment just looked a bit more stable. It was still, it was still at the time when I was um, applying it to our production code base, it was still in better mode, not even a release candidate. So it was still very early, early on. Yeah. Yes. Um, but I still want to mention that there's all, also tiny MCE and CK editor, which support a lot of functionality. Um, but for us, it was really like the, the modern documentation also of tip tap and this headless thing and the modularity. And I also checked that, for example, story block and also GitLab, um, were using tip tap and this was like, okay, that might still be in better mode, but if those companies already say, okay, we have interest in this editor, then it might also be like a confidence boost that it might be also a thing mm. for us. 
And TipTap itself is built in uh, JavaScript and TypeScript. So also the, all of the examples on their website are written in plain JavaScript. And then they have their guides and starter kits and templates for if you want to use it with React and Vue and Svelte. Maybe they have even more by now. But uh, not, not only even the examples, but they also have some specific NPM packages, for example, for Vue 2 and Vue 3. Then you have a bit of a syntax helper, for example, like a composable or a new editor that you can use directly in your view component without having to write something like a document query selector for this editor. But you can, I think, yeah, I think it's actually a composable called use editor, which you can call and then you have your editor instance. You had mentioned that this is a headless product. How does that work? Because in my mind, if I'm just thinking about like a rich text editor, it seems like there's a lot of UI heavy stuff going <laughs> on with, with a rich text editor, like all the different buttons and like rendering the things to the page and like if you've got blocks or different styling and all that sort of stuff. So how does TipTap handle this headless thing? <laughs> the easy way is it doesn't. <laughs> this okay. is this is your job as a front end developer. Ah. <laughs> okay. Um, and this is, so So on the one hand, it is a real advantage if you need this. And obviously mm -hmm. it could be a big disadvantage if you actually don't want to care about it, which is why I mentioned um, there might be some more fitting rich text editors, like even this summer note and tricks, which comes completely pre-styled. Right. Um, headless, if anybody out here right now listening and you have a phone, you can also go to the tip tab documentation. And if you check the documentation for their examples of how to add some menus, and with the menu, I mean the these floating bubble menu thingy where you highlight text and then you expect to a bar popping up with bold and italic and underline buttons, which you can click on. If you go to their examples on TipTap documentation, you actually really have native buttons not floating around with a set Z index or, or overlay. They are really just a list of native buttons which you can click to see the functionality. And the rest is for front end developers to style. I heard from their CEO that they are planning. Um, I'm not sure, sure if it's even already out because I'm not following all of the news uh, all of the time, but at least that a lot of people already said, hey, I would actually like to start quicker. Maybe I add my uh, own styles later on, but I would like to need mm -hmm. the whole editor in like, I don't know, two weeks or just to try it out or just to build a prototype, which looks a bit better. So at least they had the idea to let it come with a pre-built UI, which should follow like the idea of Tailwind CSS that you can apply some, some names and then it comes kind of pre-styled. And that might be then uh, part of the pro uh, account and pro tier. Right. And then you get a stepping stone. You can just prototype quickly. And then if you want to customize further, you can sort of remove those bits and write your own. But in the end, as yeah. you said, it's it's all about customizability. Like the, the typical problem of like, okay, you use like a, a an existing a solution, existing rich text editor, and you some at some point hit a boundary. You're like, okay, I want to implement something, but it's, it's not a trivial. Uh, and I think what we've seen a lot also with like component libraries going that way from like Bootstrap, where like, okay, you have to fight Bootstrap to like actually implement custom things versus, okay, look, you can, you own all the implementation. It's all up to you, a bit like with Tailwind. We like, we give you all the classes, all the options, or like Headless UI, um, where you say, okay, you, you, you're up to you styling, up to adding new functionalities, but the base is there and it works well. And you can fit it your, I don't know, corporate design, your brand, but also add the features that you need. Is that more or less the, the biggest benefit of TipTap, you would say? It, it depends really on what your biggest benefit is for you. Um, the headless and the, the, the part that I can style it myself was important for us. And to really have the, the complete freedom. Also with 
tricks you were able with CSS to override some styles, but there were definitely limits. For example, you could say, I, I, I check for the CSS class name. I just hope that it will never change. And then I say, okay, here's a different background color. But the limit was already the icons for bold and italic. I think these were SVG icons. And then it's like, you, you cannot simply override them. And I'm rather sure that CK Editor and Tiny MCE have some ways to modify them. I don't know what it is. Maybe it is reaching a style sheet down. Maybe it is to set custom properties. But I made a demo project with TipTap for myself first. And the way that it works is you are writing the HTML of the editor wrapper, so a div container, and you give it a specific either class or in view, you give it a reference and then you initialize it with that reference. And you can set a class or you will have the automatic class tip tip on this editor. And the way I styled it was to go to the scope style block of Vue.js and say, okay, everything in this editor that is deep inside, I want to style the following way. And for the blocks, which I mentioned beforehand, for example, the menu for the bold and italic actions or a floating menu. If you think of Notion and you type, I think, a slash and then you have these cool drop-down model or drop-down overlay thingy. Um, also, this could be just a Vue.js component which you add to your editor wrapper and there you can really style it just as a usual view component, as you would usually do it without thinking about that it's actually be rendered inside of the editor afterwards. Okay. And there you also customize behavior as in like, I want uh, another button there that should do different things. Then you can do the same also there as well. Exactly. Exactly. And this was actually the biggest advantage for us. So not that we can style everything, but that I have these, not only the freedom, but this completely in view component writing style to say, I don't want to have this strike fruit thingy, but I need an AI thingy to say, uh, I, I highlight some text and I click on a summarize button. And there is no configuration and say, okay, tip tap, suggest list, now add this element or I don't know how complicated you can make it be. It is written in, 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 in your view HTML code. And the way it works then is that you call functions that you are receiving from the editor property. So we have the editor wrapper and you render your extensions inside and all of your extensions will receive the editor as a property by default. And all of this comes with the NPM packages of view free automatically. So you will just say define props and then no view props, which you will see from the NPM package. You don't need to define them yourself and they are all type safe. So you can really see mm. which properties are inside and which types they are having. So you have a really nice auto completion if you type editor dot, and then you see a thousand um, suggestions what you can do with it. But it's usually something like, uh, when I click on the bold button, which I implemented myself, that has nothing to do with tip tip at this moment. But as soon as I click the button, which I implemented in here, then I call the function editor chain focus set node to bold execute and I'm done. All right. That, that also means that the content itself in the editor is not like just saved as a string, but it's like, it is actually has some kind of, let's say, AST, some kind of like hierarchy. It's not just, it's not just like a, a long string of the content because otherwise you couldn't focus the node and everything. So it's the thoughts behind it were really also like how to make sure the content is structured the way that I can edit smart, it's like partial things or a whole line or a whole element or a whole block. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you wouldn't even get uh, only a string because you have also like full HTML and markdown support. So you can always mm. choose as a, as a content output if you would like to have HTML and JSON. There's actually not a big difference between it. I think it's rather like how you want to save it in your database. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a third output version. I think it's called YJS. Not 100% sure, but you might need to have this output if you want to work with collaboration. 
we are jumping a bit between and it has, has so many features I'm trying to follow follow align. Um, so quickly saying it has a collaboration mode that multiple users can work on the same content at the same time, like on a cool oh. Google Doc. I know it's super cool. And they even have a feature for like busy managers that if you're offline in airplane mode, you can write a comment. And when you're going online again, it would queue again and would automatically send. Super cool. But for that, you need a specific output. I think for, I don't know how it works, um, but that would be not HTML and not JSON, but a bit more complicated. So you can support this collaboration mode. Interesting. Tip that is surprising me more and more. Like not even, okay, you can customize <laughs> yeah. it. You can add your own blocks. You have like a collaboration feature even, and then like all the pro extensions that you mentioned to even improve it further. That sounds like a, a full-fledged tool already. Uh, and I mean, when you started using it, you said it wasn't better. So it's not like five years old or something. Or maybe it isn't, you're just like a power user, but it sounds like it's, it's also not, it's, it's quite young as well. Yes, but they, they followed exactly these problems which, uh, which most of the people had. And I think they did exactly the right decisions. It is still coming with some maybe disadvantages if you want to see it like that. So if, if I'm just talking about better and release candidate, that has not, this is, Absolutely nothing to do with tip tip, but every time you use something like this as a developer, it's your own responsibility to know the maintain maintenance you might have to do afterwards. For example, there was a teeny tiny bug inside. And because I was sorry, lazy or something, I'm also actually sorry. <laughs> I did not fix that in your in, in their um code base. But um I just fixed it in my code base to kind of wrap around it. But then they fixed the bug. But it was not a breaking change in that sense. It was just a bug fix or it was just a minor or even a patch version update. But I relied on that bug, actually. <laughs> so, so it broke after a minor or even patch update. I was like, oopsie. Um, but uh, also another thing is uh, you will still have to care about a couple of things you might just expect to work out of the box. And that might be media in the sense of, for example, just to add an image, especially if you work with product managers, they will expect from your super cool rich text editor, which you um, have advocated for, for months that you can simply drag and drop an image inside, but you can't if you don't implement it. And you will have the choice to use um, an extensions from TipTap or to write it themselves. And at the moment I started, the whole core was there and working really well but they did not have these file extension somehow handler, which they have now. So right now they have something to take care of files. It is really like a whole thing, which you can use over multiple pages or even websites. Oh. But as I started it, I had to write a functionality to have an input field with type file, which is checking for the file type, if it's in JPEG, if it's in PNG, if it's smaller than, I don't know, 50 megabyte. And then as soon as it's there, it's not saved on a database yet. So I have to write the whole fetch request to save that to a database. Right. And then to take care about that the editor actually knows what that is. And this is the part where the custom blocks I was mentioning were coming in. So the second biggest advantage of this framework for me, of TipTip for me, is that you can add your own blocks. And with a block, I basically mean something like an HTML element. So in TipTap and in your content, you will have an H1, H2, H3. You have an ordered list, you have ordered list. But you can create your own block, which you can name however you want it. And for me, it was something like, image wrapper. It was not only like an image source, but I needed to specifically then say to which URL this image should link to, specifically in the Rails code base. I think in Rails, it is called something like action attachable, I forgot it, <laughs> attachable action text attachment. A lot of attachables in the name. And uh, we were using an SGID. So instead of having an image with a source and alt, attributes inside. We were rather, rather having like these action text attachment with an ID. And we were telling in the JavaScript of the extension to TipTap, hey, if you see this kind of HTML tag name, then open this extension file, which is a JavaScript or TypeScript file, 
And you will use this HTID to ask for an image source, and then you will build the HTML for an image source um, or an image tag. And the user in the content will see an image. Also, if you make a right click, inspect the element in your HTML, you will see in the content an image tag. But if you will check what the request to save your content at the code base, uh, at the database is doing, it will send a fetch request with the translated extension name. That's a really neat way of handling the custom code blocks. Because I, I was going to ask that question because you had said you could save it as HTML to your database. So I was trying to figure out how do these custom blocks fit in? But I mean, the web components, like syntax, that makes a whole lot of sense. It, it does. It is, it is so it is so seamless. Yeah. So you still have to do the work. At that time, I, I was working at a startup. So finally, after two days, I had it ready, finally, <laughs> <laughs> so that I have an image input field and also a drag drop um, handler. And for that drag drop handler, I actually have to thank the community because even if it was not there as a first party extension from TipTap yet, there was a person who was basically mostly alone at that time maintaining something called Awesome TipTap. I think we also here all know Awesome View. And there was a um, repository called Awesome TipTap. And there was this one example for drag and drop functionalities for images, also videos, also really the handling if you select multiple images and drag drop in them inside. All of this implementation was there for me mm. to basically just copy paste. And there was also another example extension for then resizing, because that also does not come out of the box. Of if course. you move your image in, then you have an image. Nobody said that you can now make it bigger or make it smaller or even mask it out. Um, so that is not coming out of the box. So there you will have to rely that either TipTip has an extension for you, which you can use, the community has an extension, or that you are just very good at coding and can implement it yourself. But I guess it's like the, the by both, like it's the pro and the con of the whole thing. Like it's great yeah. because it's that flexible and customizable, but the downside is that you have to build it yourself. Same with like, I don't know, using a website builder versus DIY with a framework. Like you can do everything yourself, but you have to do everything yourself. I do believe that it actually does fit really great in this Vue.js system because we are also kind of used to not have all of the functionality out of the box, which we might not even need and which then might be hard to override. Vue.js itself, it comes with a core and everything else is modular. If you need a store, you can add Pinya. If you need a router, then you can use a Vue router. And with TipTap, it is very similar. It comes with a core, which is called the starter kit. So the starter kit already includes things like the bold and italic. So um, they have nodes and marks. Nodes are like HTML blocks, something like a headline or a list, everything what is in one block. And they have marks for bold, italic, everything that is kind of like inline styles. And already in the starter kit, you will have history. So undo, redo. No. So try to implement that yourself. That might be hard, but it's there. Um, you have a history and you have cursors. You have the right cursors so you can focus and select an image which does have this normal cursor or you can hover over a text and you have this text cursor and all of the things that you mm. might expect to actually be there are actually there in the starter kit already and then they have their modular uh, own first party extensions what i really like to use is the placeholder so if the document is completely empty, you can set your placeholder and it has so much freedom. You can set the text depending really on the state. Like, is it just a new empty line at the end or is the whole document completely empty? Then you might want to write something else. You can even implement the whole page is empty. So we let the placeholder now appear like an H1. So it starts with an H1 page title. And then if you click enter, you will have your usual paragraph style. You can write your own text. You can write your own style. So usually light gray opacity 80%. But exactly. if you want to make it hot pink, you can make it hot pink. You can define should this placeholder be always there. Or should it only be there if you focus on a new line? And it's actually 
rather on the simple side of implementing it. You can still do things wrong because it's still code and therefore per se already hard, but at least they make it as simple as possible for you to do it. Very sweet. So with, with all the implementations that you said, you also mentioned awesome TipTap before and the community. Uh, in all the time using TipTap, did you feel that the community grew around that? That you see more and more community plugins also? Because I think that's also one of the things that um, like is is very important for choosing a framework like like Vue, for example, like the community around it, people being involved with it, contributing, writing their own packages, their own um, well parts of like say marks, their own uh, blocks, and so on, so on. What happened in between is they were having their release candidate and the release candidate shipped. So it is a stable version now. And I think in some sometime in between, like I started with it and using it and afterwards, they've now also been backed by Y Combinator. So that was a huge marketing thing. Yeah. And what I saw really popping up were their own extension, which I really would have loved to have two years earlier, like these image file handling things, but also their own AI extension, which I unfortunately wrote uh, my custom one beforehand. I would now right now just use theirs. From the um, community, I currently don't know if there were more popping up. Because I can't, just can't remember which the, which had been there in the beginning and which are there now. I think it's maybe double the size by now. So it's definitely people from the community adding some, but even more their own extension, which was just like air. It felt like every two weeks there was a new extension that they prepared for users. And what I also still uh, wanted to mention is that TipTap is built upon ProSmiro, which is also a... Uh, um, framework or which is the framework and API for editors uh, used on websites. But if you try to write your own Prose Mirror plugin, it's <laughs> it's not that simple. And I think TipTap is making it simple. But you can write if you also write your own extension, you will see that you are using the Prose Mirror APIs completely under the hood, and mm. you can also you kind of using the the TipTap core package, you will have also the functions directly to write pros Miro yourself. Yeah, that's really nice that you get that, like, I guess, low level access, for lack of a better word. And it feels like as you're describing this to me, like there's, they, they've handled the extensibility problem really well, which is something that's, that's often challenging with these libraries and stuff where yeah like you you mentioned at the beginning as you the reason you found tip tap in the first place is libraries can be useful these tools are useful but then you need custom behavior or custom styling but this whole headless system and being able to write these plugins extensions and you have to do a bit more work yourself but if you do need that custom stuff like it's way easier than just trying to like hack your way around and like override CSS with, you know, importance scattered everywhere and like <laughs> CSS class names changing underneath you and all that stuff. Yes. I think trying to explain how our extension looks like is, is, is a bit complicated because I want to explain it in simple terms because when you see the code, it does look more simple. It's just a bit hard to mm. explain. But I have uh, the repository with a demo where I added um, the custom extension for the AI extension I once wrote. And I think we can link it somewhere in, in show notes and of post course. it on all of the social medias. And then you can go through it. Because what I also want to say about these extensions um, and the seamless integration with you is you have the JavaScript file of your extension. Let's say the image handler. You have your image handler extension. It is a JavaScript and it will need some functions and constants to be configured. You will set the name, which will be like the JSON name or the HTML tag name. And you will say what attributes you want to preset or the attributes you might want to expect for an image 
tag, you might want to expect a width and a height if it is lazy loaded, if you want to preset some styles, etc. So you can really write down, I expect a height and width to be there. If they are none, then set these values. If it's lazy loaded, da 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 da. And you can merge these attributes with the ones you actually want to preset. I will have an example for what you might want to preset uh, later. And then you have a block where you can add your HTML block and node. So without any framework, you can use JavaScript to create HTML. Like, um, I, don't, I don't know the syntax by heart because I never do it. I will always Google it, but you can create the element diff and then you create an element image. And then you, I think you can diff append um, image and then you have HTML, which is doing stuff. So you can write your HTML like that, or you use the view node renderer, which comes with the tip tip view package and you write a view component. And then you go into your JavaScript file of your extension and you go to this add node function and you say view node renderer, this view component, pass on the properties and done. And then you have your normal view component which has a node view wrapper because it needs it. And it receives mm. again, the editor as property. It receives the attributes or the properties um, of, your, of your extension. Like again, the width and the height and the lazy loaded are inside of the attributes. Everything is reactive. I don't know how it just works. <laughs> and you can also talk along with your other components and extensions and it's, it's, it's really nice. Definitely sounds less painful than writing it manually in JavaScript. So every everyone, like I, I really encourage everyone who's never written like a to-do list or something in plain JavaScript, just do it. And then you will all appreciate frameworks like Vue or whatever mm -hmm. you're using, probably Vue, for, for not doing that with us anymore. But it's it's so nice that the, that the tip tab integration with Vue seems to be mm -hmm. like really rock, rock solid and also deep. It's like, okay, we have a, like a composable. We have the node render to ensure we can render all components in there and they're reactive. They can communicate so it really preserves the the functionality of the frameworks and embraces also the way of writing code like with with third party libraries especially the ones that are framework agnostic in quotes um i i often see like the, the typical problem is like data grids and they all have their one way of of using them and it's always painful because they're not made for being used with you and the integration is like yeah the basics might work but as soon as you need complex stuff it's over. It's really horrible. So I'm I'm really really happy to see uh, one of the like really good integrations with a framework by something that's framework agnostic and also embracing once again like how code and view is written, how it works, and how people would try it out and want to make it work. So that's great. And it would work just to say out of fairness, it would work completely the same way with React. You don't have a view node renderer, but you have a React node renderer. And you can write JSX, JSX, whatever you do in React. The only remaining thing that you will have to do is how to call this extension. So for example, you as a user, you drag, drop your image inside. And I in the editor have something which is waiting for a new file of the type image. But how do I say now I want to have this as, an, as my image extension? And... What I said earlier is that you have functions that you can call on the editor, like this node to be bold. The chain and execute is usually because you very often want to chain some commands, especially with setting the focus back to the editor. So if you set a node to be bold, then you might have lost your focus on the bold button that you have clicked. And with dot focus, you say set the focus back to the editor again after that bold text now. But I cannot say actually a set no to image because there, there is not, what, what, what do you want? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. So instead, what you can do is to extend the core of tip tip in your code base with more functions. And this is also where TypeScript comes in extremely handy. Mm. So you can use the syntax to declare the module tip tip core and the and use the interface for the commands and just extend it. 
So for your custom extensions image, you can register the function set image node. It is a function and it has the return type of usual commands of tiptap. And in this set image node function, you can again just tell tiptap what to do. So basically uh, insert the content with the name image tag and the rest then works out of the box because tiptap knows how to handle an HTML tag called this image tag. And with TypeScript support, you will then be able to have auto completion when you again call editor.chain, you will receive the suggestion set image tag, and you will also see if you have some properties that you can add, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, it's, it's really lovely to, to also see the TypeScript is embraced there in a way that, okay, even if you define your own extension with own functionalities that like it's it's made in the way that you can register it and TypeScript can pick it up and you still have the not only the convenience but also the the certainty that things will work or or break if you update your extension. Um, I also noted from from other frameworks and ecosystems and for example with, with Nux it's the same idea. Like we also try to ensure like okay if you add something on your own then you get more as TypeScript support and it's a lot of magic behind that to actually make it work. Um, so even better that. Once again, the DX and the focus there to make sure that, well, you have to do most of the things yourself with the editor, but it's easy to make it. And um, yeah, it's it's not clunky. It works off the box. TypeScript uh, is, is there. So, so, so far, it sounds like a lot of thumbs up and a lot of pros to definitely uh, try it out for everybody who hasn't used it that yet. Yes. Yeah. And if you want to have it pre-styled, you can use my demo <laughs> and just fork it. Exactly. And then you can see it with size. <laughs> Perfect. As you've been talking and, and explaining more and more about TipTap, and I've kind of been glancing at the docs here as we've been going to sort of see what's what's up here. And, you know, I've got th those wheels turning and trying to think of what, what kind of little projects can I make with this? And when will I have time to play with this and try it out myself? Because it seems like there's lots of, uh, lots of great functionality in here and... Yeah, I mean, I I just want to like try it out now and build my own stuff. So any any good ideas? If you have any ideas where you where you think Michael could use TipTap, or <laughs> write it write it in the comments, write to us on, oh, no. on Twitter or X. <laughs> so give give him some ideas. Maybe for the next live stream, who knows? Who knows? And maybe. <laughs> and, and on that note, uh, if you also want to see more of TipTap uh, in together with AI. Uh, then Vanessa will uh, speak at uh, Vue.js DE Conf in Bonn in Germany this autumn uh, in early October. Also for that, we have a 10% discount code, which is Deja View, of course, really fitting. Link is also in the description below. So if you want to see Vanessa, and I might also be there. I heard they, they need an MC or so. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, <laughs> maybe giving a talk to... Um, every, conf every conference needs an Alex. Uh, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to be there. But there are also lots and of other Everybody qualities. needs your stickers. <laughs> oh yeah. This, th these are these are limited editions though. Let's see if I print them for for Germany. For the maybe, good friends. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I, I have like five or six left. Um I also link to, to the stickers if you're not aware of them uh, in the show notes as well. But yeah, definitely uh, make sure to join. It will be a lovely conference. Uh was there two years ago already. Uh it's lots of fun. And especially if you're uh, around, then uh, make sure to catch up, talk with us, uh, talk about a view, deja view, tip tap, and everything comes to your mind. And now that we covered a lot of tip tap, I wonder. So Vanessa, you you chose tip tap over all the other uh, other editors based on on all the things we talked about. Now uh, you ma you made an amazing Notion page comparing all of them. Maybe you even have it still around. If yes, then we also shared it in the show notes because. It could also be, yeah, perfect. Uh, this could also be super interesting. Just I, I've seen it in so many cases, like these typical like big comparisons, and it was for for your <laughs> use case for for your product. Uh, but still, people might be like, it might help a lot to just see like, okay, maybe we choose another editor because we don't need that much flexibility. There's some some more work in. So that might be. A oh good God, idea. It, is, it is a very unprofessional comparison table. <laughs> that's so that's fine. <laughs> But it was it was the reality because I had to do the research quick 
And I pretty much said, okay, these are the three big ones. And the one is not even big. It's just new and cool. And I did my uh, prototypes with it. And then I relatively quickly come to a decision. That was not for a super big company where I would say I do these and these and these um, risk evaluations or et cetera. Um, but still, tap, tap, just was looking so good. And you already... Um, I mentioned the Vue.js Bon, where I would specifically also talk about this AI extension. And the one reason we had to use TipTap and these, these custom blocks that we can roll, write with it was just the ability to add iframes, YouTube, Google SharePoints, everything basically what you can embed on a website. But also we always had the idea to add an AI extension. And with that, I actually might like to do a cliffhanger also for Deja Vu, if I might can invite myself a second time to talk yeah, about for sure. it. Of course. It would, it would be with the TipTap editor, but then really the focus on um, the AI extension and everything what will be also on the server side and tokens and the UX, mm. how to add AI to a editable editor and prompt injections and prompt engineering, which I like to rather call prompt hacking because there is not much engineering actually <laughs> behind it. It's more trial and error. And the second cliffhanger there I would mention is that I said you can preset some properties mm -hmm. on your own extension. And the one I had to set for the AI extension was that some parts of my editor content should be client side only. Because oh. I had to render an input field so users can talk to AI, but I don't want to persist that input field on the backend data. Hmm. That's true. And you can do that. And I will explain how. Lovely. All right. All right. Well, you've, you've got me hooked. Yes. The next same. episode. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So we, we will definitely make sure that will happen also in a reasonable time so people don't have to wait too long. Uh, mm -hmm. But other than that, yeah, then join just VGSD, Conf and Bonn. Um, Vanessa, one last question before we wrap up here is, where can people follow you? Oh, oh is, is there any social media where you cannot follow me? <laughs> I'm... <laughs> TikTok, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> oh, true, true. I'm a silent listener on TikTok. <laughs> so I don't accept any friend requests. I don't know why people are sending me friend requests on TikTok. I don't do anything. But you can follow me on Mastodon as Vanessa Otto. You can try to follow me on X, but I'm not very active there anymore. And there I am Wansel. You can find me on LinkedIn again as Wansel or Vanessa Otto. I am registered on Blue Sky. I'm not active yet until we finally have more people there. I am also Vanessa Otto over there. You can find my website under wansel.io. That is V-A-N-N-S-L.io. And there is also should be an email address where you can contact me perfect of course also all the links to all the socials in the show notes and everywhere <laughs> uh, so you can just click on it but it's still it's still good if you if you don't uh, like if you were typing right now you like hit the enter button and it's perfect yeah uh vanessa thank you so much for for coming on deja view then last last question is there anything you want to share that we we didn't cover anything that's uh that we missed out uh or any famous last words so to say until next episode, of course, right? Mm, yeah, I, I would actually say try it out for yourself. Um, I I know the the team somehow behind TipTap, and I do really like them. So I believe in their good work. So test it out if it might be also a thing for you. Um, and it would definitely make me happy to see more people there because more people means uh, more extensions also for me mm -hmm. in the future. Perfect. Yeah, I think we, we couldn't end with, with better words. So once again, thanks. Thank you so much for coming on. Looking forward to the next episode. And for everybody listening right now, check out the older Deja View episodes as well. We have a little backlog already. And depends on when you listen to that, check out the next episode with Vanessa if it's already out or the next episode right after this one, which will also be super interesting. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, looking forward to all your feedback, comments, and uh, let us all know uh, what Michael should build in his next stream of TipTap. Thanks, everybody. Thank, thank uh, you, Drew, so much. It was a lot of fun. It definitely was. So <laughs> see you, everybody, around, and uh, talk to you soon. See you. <laughs>